What's up guys, we're back for another week of AI news. The biggest news this week is probably Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference. They revealed Vision Pro, which is a VR goggle with a revolutionary UI that combines eye tracking and hand gestures to operate it. And the price of it is... Apple Vision Pro starts at $34.99. It will be available early next year on Apple.com. You have probably seen what Vision Pro can do, so I'm not going to go into it, but how's the VR goggle related to AI? Don't worry, I am not turning into a tech news channel, and Apple is actually one of the best companies in implementing AI to real-world applications. The depth sensors, facial reconstruction for FaceTime, eye tracking on the external goggle, hand gesture detection, and optic ID definitely is powered by machine learning or at least AI. But 3,500 is definitely very unrealistic for mainstream usage, and on top of these extremely immersive functions it has got people memeing about it. The price tag even went on trending, which is pretty funny. But this is definitely a big step forward for a fully immersive digital XR experience, especially with all these 3D AI developments like Nerf. AI-generated SpongeBob is probably the most viral AI meme content this week. I saw it on TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, literally everywhere. It's basically just two personalities, mostly SpongeBob and Patrick, talking about some very random topics every other five minutes or until the conversation it is really dry. My guess on how this works is that it has an AutoGPT based backbone with some mediocre text to speech, and in one of the AutoGPT goals, it is set to steer the 3D characters around. I'm not fully sure how exactly they got the characters moving, but definitely some language model plugins like the Unity or Unreal Engine GPT, which can convert natural language into system commands. Most of the time I checked, this stream averages around 5,000 viewers, which is insane, and went on for quite a long time. If fully AI generated content, content can get this much attraction, oh god, I can't imagine what monstrosities large corporations will do to milk this, but I guess this is only that popular because of the absurd things they could say since it's a parody. This person takes pretending to be sick to the next level with a new photoshop generative fill. This QR code based control net model transforms QR code into art while being able to stay fully functional. The age of QR codes anime girls is upon us guys. This change in reaction from the White House people between March 2023 and May 2023 is kind of funny. Both times we're talking about AI safety but the first time was only from a CEO and the second time was from a group of reputable AI researchers. They were discussing about this statement made from safe.ai about how AI poses existential risks for the human race. But on on the other hand, Andrew Eng, one of the top leading AI researchers, stated, I'm struggling to see how AI could pose any meaningful risks for our extinction. I think his claim makes a lot of sense, and it's certainly not comparable to the nuclear war scenario mentioned by Safe.ai in their statement about why AI should be a global priority. He also stated that AI would contribute massively to society instead of leading humans to extinction. The way he phrased the whole message is much better than how I'm summarizing, so go check out his full video. Sam XQ short for segment anything in high quality, and oh my god, it is disgustingly accurate for image segmentation. I have to say, the recent segment Segment Anything research has just brought a wave of crazy good image segmentation research out, and SamXQ is definitely the current state of the art. They will release the codes in two weeks, so go start it if you want. On top of that, a new research just dropped while I was editing called Recognize Anything Model. They probably panicked because SamXQ was dropped a few days earlier, and they still use Grounded Sam, which is like two months old and performs slightly worse. It's a pretty strong image tagging model, though. Probably state of the art for now. We caught another open source tech video model with a resolution of 1024 times 576 made by Kamenderu. I think it's the first text to video model that does not have a watermark. Nice. This research states that intelligent brains take longer to solve difficult problems, so it kind of explained why computers aren't smarter than us. <laughs> the news of the Air Force AI drone killing its operators that went viral is a complete hoax. So no, Skynet is not real and fake news is still a problem. Style Drop is a very new text to image generation by Google that is able to very accurately copy the style of the reference image, copying simplistic logo designs, color schemes, illustrations, and even the watery texture left by the watercolor markers can be done too. Google did not open source it as usual. 
Maybe the real existential risk is that we make chatbots too good and humans stop procreating. These AI personal chatbots are so creepy. They make you use it continuously by providing rewards and talking to these engagement and attention seeking chatbots is gonna destroy a lot of young people's mentals. This is probably going to make kids not want to interact with real people because AI can just say what they want to hear. Remember, the generation from now on are going to grow up with this in their world and when they choose the path of seeking mental comfort from an AI or whether if it's seeking friendship or romance, that's when we have fucked up. They're going to be lacking the knowledge of how to hold a real conversation or even engage in a normal social interaction. I can see this become a real societal problem in the future if these desperate attention-seeking chatbots are not regulated. Japan has recently confirmed its decision to allow AI to train on any data, including copyrighted content. It also does not matter if the trained model is used commercially or not. The responsibilities lie with the person who generates the content, not the one who trains the AI. So the generated AI images are copyright infringement if similarities is recognized. Israel also issues that it's okay to use copyrighted works for machine learning. The Twitter account of OpenAI CTO got hacked and it was used to promote Web3. But if hacked accounts are used to promote Web3, how legit is Web3 really? Belgium's agency that does construction made this ad and went viral. However, someone else made this. And there's a new Times magazine on AI. It got even more dramatic now. OpenAI's 1 million cybersecurity grant program that supports the projects listed in the following. There's a new research called Snap Diffusion, a new text-to-image diffusion model that can be run locally on a mobile phone and generates within two seconds. Bytes are all you need. Transformers operating directly on file bytes is a new research paper which demonstrated image classification can be done on a byte level instead of RGB, and even obtains a better accuracy too. It can also operate on file types like WAVE to recognize keywords in speech, What's even cooler is, quote, the ability to perform inference with a hypothetical privacy-preserving camera which avoids forming full images by consistently masking 90% of pixel channels while still achieving 71.35% accuracy on ImageNet. So basically, it can process images without the need to see or save the entire image while only losing around 6% of its accuracy. You have privacy and you save processing memory? That is pretty cool. OpenAI improved its mathematical reasoning language model by by rewarding the process and not the end result. They claim it is able to achieve the state of the art, but well, who knows? There is a new tool called Redream that combines a lot of the workflows together to help you convert videos into anime-like, with a slightly nicer UI compared to what people usually use. It's not really real-time, but I guess it technically is? This guy made a tool that lets you organize files with GPT, kinda nice, not gonna lie. Runway Gen 2, which is the pure text to video generation, has gone out of beta and is now available for everyone. Let's end today's episode with more image to image or multi frame rendering deep fake, which has gotten very popular in China and Japan recently. And I've been seeing Japanese Twitter calling this AI cosplay too, which is kind of interesting. If you like this AI news that I'm doing, please like and sub so I know if it's good or not. I've been working on my usual videos too, so don't worry that I'll become a news channel. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see you all in the next one.